Foreign service officers, specialists, and civil service professionals from diverse ethnic, cultural, educational, and geographic backgrounds work in the United States and abroad to help amplify America's foreign policy and promote our values and interests to ensure the safety, security, and stability of our country. My honest evaluation would be that Cape Town is one of the greatest cities on the planet. I go to one of my favorite parks just down the street, the Tokai Forest Park, where I run the trails. And that gives me an opportunity to stay in shape. And really, at this point, it's probably one of my favorite places in Cape Town because it allows me to just de-stress and uh, to, to feel good again. I'm a diplomatic security special agent. I'm the regional security officer here at U.S. Consulate General Cape Town. Uh, I did come from a law enforcement family, so that's something that always interested me. I didn't really uh, get an interest in serving at the federal level until I went to college and majored in political science and had a lot of classes in international affairs and really uh, became interested in traveling uh, all over the world. One of the great things about this job and a lot of jobs within the Foreign Service is that you have that opportunity to, to meet an array of different people. You never know what you're going to do from one day to the other. Uh, when you're in the, in the field office, for example, in the United States, one day you could be doing an, an investigation in a certain neighborhood, and the next day, yes, you could be trailing the Secretary of State or some other foreign dignitary. Diplomatic security special agents are half diplomat and half police officer, and I think that's a, a good way to look at it. And so we, we definitely are enhancing the image of the United States overseas. A diplomatic security special agent, when they're back home in the United States, is responsible for uh, conducting uh, investigations into U.S. passport and U.S. visa fraud and also doing protection for U.S. foreign dignitaries who visit the United States and also for doing personal background investigations. A diplomatic security special agent is, is a member of the United States Foreign Service. Uh, I think sometimes when you're uh, with some of these dignitaries, whether it be the Secretary of State or the U.S. UN ambassador or some other foreign dignitary, I think you don't really think about uh, what you're doing at the time. You're just you're so focused on what it is you're supposed to be doing, uh, whether that's protection for them or trying to figure out what the route may be for them to get to the next location. Sometime afterwards, whether it's weeks afterwards or sometimes months afterwards, you, you sit back and you think about that and you say, wow, I was there as they were actually negotiating that peace treaty or as they were signing that peace treaty or, or whatever it may be. Um, one of our big mission goals here in South Africa is um, economic empowerment. And so one big thing that we do here at the U.S. Consulate in Cape Town is we have an American corner in downtown Cape Town where um, we teach classes. So we work on coding classes, um, job readiness skills. Um, we have young people that we're teaching how to be um, youth journalists. The more that we can help build skills, build confidence, um, also build leadership skills and leadership traits in young people, um, the better. One of the most important things that I've gotten out of this career is that ability to pass that love of travel, that inquisitiveness, um, that sense of being a global citizen to my children. I think they'll be better American citizens knowing that they're actually global citizens. I joined the Foreign Service 14 years ago. I was a graduate student, I was doing a PhD in art history, and I was really interested in helping to showcase American culture to the world and create a life that uh, is fully engaged in the world around us. If I've contributed anything to this profession, I hope it's that I've put a positive face on the U.S. for the world. I was assigned to oversee new construction and renovation of the U.S. Embassy in Niamey, Niger. Making those buildings a work of architecture that represents American society and the American government is for me a very important aspect of the work I do. Most of the people that interact with us as Americans overseas especially in developing countries, their interaction is going to be limited to the embassy. I've been a practicing architect uh, for 18 years before I joined the department in 2010. I worked with a series of small, medium, and large firms in the private sector. One of my hobbies, one of my passions is to travel. So that sounded pretty interesting, putting two passions, construction, design, and travel together. In 
every country doing a project inside a U.S. embassy or participating in the building of a new U.S. embassy, it is a very prestigious project. So people do take a lot of, a lot of pride in being part of that, of that team. In the process of looking for opportunities to work in Latin American policy, I knew that I had to get a job at the U.S. Department of State headquarters. I knew that I had to make my way to D.C. I was essentially exploring my options when I was finishing undergrad, and at that point, I knew I wanted to get into public service and be able to contribute back to the community where I was raised, and um, it was something that I was very passionate about. Um, so I knew that was my route, and uh, I was exploring the various sectors, um, and kind of came across the Department of State uh, as a blend of being able to have a direct impact on migration, being able to somehow uh, contribute to uh, my community um, at the same time. So as an intern in at the U.S. Mission in Geneva, I was able to uh, experience firsthand uh, multilateral negotiations at the United Nations and um, the World Trade Organization and the International Labor Organization. I try and go for a run um, every day in the mornings and that, that allows me to refresh, reset my brain and pull away from everything but also being able to enjoy DC. Um, the capital. I mean, it's 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 quite exciting to be here and doing policy work, but also getting a glimpse of the reality is I made it. I made it here. My history with Brazil started approximately 12 years ago, and I was going into my junior year of college, and I saw a picture of Rio, and I knew that I just had to go there. As a consular fellow, I work specifically in the consular section of the U.S. Embassy in Brasilia. I am the person who's interfacing with the local public, who gets to interact with Brazilians, who gets to speak Portuguese. When I go on an outreach trip, I am representing the consular section, so I'm expected to provide services that would be relevant to the different aspects of the section, which would be non-immigrant visas and American citizen services. I believe that this is one of my greatest contributions is I am serving people both abroad and in the U.S. I think if you uh, told me that I had to live in one place for the next 20 years of my life, I wouldn't be able to handle it. I looked at all of the different career options and the office management specialist uh, career seemed to, to most match my interests and to qualifications. I studied English literature in university and I personally had a, a variety of different experiences. I worked in real estate, I served as an English language instructor overseas. There's no one path uh, to becoming an office management specialist. I already loved uh, the idea of living and working overseas. I'd forged my path uh, just, to, just to get that experience. I've been with the State Department for uh, 10 years and I began to look for different opportunities working in political and economic sections. I would get the opportunity to work in an executive office and uh, to serve a principal um, covering a different range of activities. Don't count yourself out because this is an incredible opportunity and uh, no matter where you're coming from, uh, this could be the career for you. The challenges we face demand a wide range of skills and experience in IT, construction, medical services, cybersecurity, office administration, operations, and management. We need experts with these and other specialized skills, creative problem-solving capabilities, and global perspectives to support and expand our efforts worldwide. I come from an immigrant family. Um, my family has no connections. We emigrated from Poland when I was eight years old. My parents had little more than a few hundred dollars in their pockets. Fast forward to today, and I am a U.S. diplomat representing our government overseas. I analyzed the impact of um, 
the evolution of a wide range of issues such as aviation, um, transportation, telecommunications policy, labor, and I analyze how that impacts um, the economy in the United States. So job growth, increased prosperity, increased trade, ways that we can grow our own economy by, um, by strengthening our diplomatic relationships overseas. One of the events that I worked on was uh, convening a um, discussion on the sharing economy, the, um, which is you know, the Ubers, the Airbnbs, and other sharing platforms, and their role in today's economy. Um, and we discussed, like, where is this new marketplace taking our economy? What are the regulatory implications? What are the consumer protections that we need to be thinking about moving forward? When I'm doing this outreach, I'm not at my desk. I'm all over London, I'm outside of London, I have to admit, I wasn't expecting um, the State Department to be what it is. I don't know what I was expecting. Perhaps um, a government job that focuses largely on reading through documents and writing reports, but um, it's turned out to be the most remarkable experience. And I get to support our leaders in their mission and do a job that matters. The medical provider um, in the life of the embassy community is the sole provider for care of diplomats as well as direct hires that are stationed to a particular embassy or consulate. So we take care of immunizations, we assess um, the problems that people have when they come in, the medical problems. We may um, do physical exams, um, order x-rays or uh, various different lab tests, come up with a diagnosis and we treat, just like we do in, in the States. But um, this, in a sense, is on a smaller scale, whereas I may um, not only um, act as the, the lab technician on various uncertain days, but I may actually run the lab. I worked for uh, eight years as a uh, structural engineer. Uh, I worked for design firms in uh, California and in Utah, uh, and then I joined the Foreign Service. I was relocated to London um, to work on the new London Embassy, uh, as well as some regional projects within Europe. It is challenging working on uh, such a big project. It's very fast moving. Um, we have to keep on top of everything. The contractor often comes to us with questions uh, regarding um, clarifications to the, the drawings or field conditions that don't meet what we were expecting. And in order to keep the project on schedule, it's uh, really critical for us to um, resolve these issues very quickly. Our uh, crew consists of both uh, American and local uh, engineers. Our, our basic role is to ensure that the government gets what they paid for. So this means ensuring that uh, the construction meets our standards. This can consist of anything from reviewing shop drawings and submittals to uh, out in the field spending a lot of time monitoring the work and making sure that what was installed was, was what was uh, contracted. Ensuring that the building meets all of our safety and security and functionality requirements. We do spend a fair amount of time in the office uh, reviewing drawings and uh, on both hard copies and, and on our computers. The Overseas Buildings Operations mission is to build safe, secure and functional buildings. I am part of a tandem couple. That means my husband is also a Foreign Service employee. Uh, we have a five-year-old son and he speaks Spanish fluently. Work-life balance takes on a whole new meaning when you're talking about uh, living all over the world with your family. I think it's also important to, to have that sense of balance within you before you join the Foreign Service. Know that your career um, will be a balance of both hardship and not so hardship tours. I came in as an information management specialist. My uh, academic background might be more typical for a Foreign Service officer, but I, I actually think that um, having that background and the tech skills that I picked up along the way after college 
um, are a perfect blend. Um, that's a big part of the job is to pro provide feedback um, on, on the department's technology from a field perspective uh, and then to help the field understand what Washington's trying to accomplish with the new technologies. Here in uh, Mexico, there's an uh, embassy group, a women in STEM working group. I feel like I well represent the T of the STEM field. And through that working group, um, I've had some great opportunities. It's not just um, a working group that, that is uh, made up of members of embassy employees, but also of contacts in Mexico. I, I'm passionate about the Department of State's mission and I understand the IT guys. I'm not in it for the zeros and ones, but I totally get that part of it. And so I think that's what I bring to the table is to be able to uh, translate between the two and to move the mission of diplomacy forward with technology. Mexico City is a large place. Over um, 1,400 employees assigned to this mission, over 13 different government facilities throughout Mexico City. There's over 29 different government agencies, all of which we have just about everybody here. Right now I'm a special agent assigned to the U.S. Embassy in Mexico City. So in 2004, after I finished out Fallujah, I had an opportunity to re-enlist in the Marine Corps for another four years. So I did, and I joined the Marine Security Guard Group, assigned uh, to the U.S. Embassy in Rome, Italy. I met my now wife, Laura. Um, she was a seasoned Foreign Service officer. I got an opportunity to work with the Foreign Service in the U.S. State Department. In fact, many government agencies, but specifically the State Department. We worked hand-in-hand -hand with the diplomatic security. And it was an opportunity for me to see something in a career outside of the U.S. Marine Corps. I did everything that I possibly could to make sure I was set and prepared as possible to be a diplomatic security agent. As a special agent domestically, we look at kind of two main portfolios. Everything from cybersecurity um, to overseas protection. But more importantly, domestically, we look at our investigative portfolios, huge for us, passport and visa fraud. And also we do uh, protection for foreign dignitaries that travel within the United States. Another 50% of our work is all overseas. Where overseas, our main mission is to provide a safe and secure environment for the conduct of foreign policy. Period. So one of the biggest rewards of working for the U.S. Department of State is to continue on with my public service within the U.S. government, bring the U.S. culture into this country and talk about how um, essentially what the United States is and break down barriers and remove perceptions and, and that's an incredible responsibility and also just uh, highly rewarding for me. My whole aspiration had been getting to Washington, D.C. because I saw the, the monuments, the, the Capitol, the Mall, the White House, and I felt like that would, would be the perfect place for me to begin my career. The idea of internships and work experience is the best thing that we have going. For me, I felt like there were a range of people, and these are what I call baby boomers who, came, who were there for me, and I feel like I had to be there for this generation now to provide similar guidance as well. Because just like me, I had dreams, so do, do they and how do you help them reach those goals? I think that's what our responsibilities are as, as senior officials. So I fill out the application uh, for an internship overseas very next summer, and up in Zambia. And of course I had to persuade my parents that I should go and spent 10 weeks there, which was life changing. And that was the point where I said, well, this is very different and this is a career path for me. And I actually ended up in the presidential management internship program I'm now the acting deputy director in the office of the Haiti Special Coordinator. We're now trying to work with the governor of Haiti to complete its electoral process. We have a strong team of about 12 people dedicated to the economic, political, consular-related issues uh, associated with assisting the people of Haiti. We work with our embassy in, in uh, Port-au-Prince, Haiti, but it takes all of us to get this uh, where it needs to be to give the people of Haiti a, a better future. The other point is that Foreign service or civil service, you're supporting your country in some profound way, and it takes all of us to make that work. America's diplomats work in sometimes dangerous circumstances, but they accept these risks in the service of our country because they know the United States must continue to be a force for peace and progress in the world.